What's going on people and welcome to a brand new episode of Too Many Games and Not Enough Time, the podcast where I get to speak to incredible gamers across the globe. Yes, it is Christmas time and we have been going ham with up to four videos a week on the channel. Thank you for all of the support. Thank you for all of the love. Thank you for allowing our team to grow and continue taking it to another level. Now, talking about another level on today's episode, I have such a great individual. You've seen him on the channel before. We are talking host of the Burnout Brighter podcast. We are talking host of Carpool Gaming's PlayStation Drive. We are talking my persona partner in crime he never invited me to the pool party but it's cool because he's someone that i generally consider as a friend of mine matt welcome to too many games and the third recurring guest on the podcast what's going on my dude it's awesome to be back and i just need to set the record straight the invitation was sent it's not my fault you didn't read the tiny font on the bottom of the thing but it's, it's awesome to be back here dude i'm stoked to rock with you once again and talk about all the gaming things that we're going to get into well i love being able to talk content with you like we've met i don't even know has it been like two years now yeah dude i think it was yeah, so 2020 about- yeah, all right, cool. So yeah, so just over two years ago, we met, you reached out to me about your podcast. Um, I get reached out a lot. Whenever someone reaches out, I go and check out the content right, right away. And I loved it. I think I listened to about four or five episodes straight away. And as soon as we got on, we've just vibe. We talk about gaming all the time. Like we're always messing each other. If it's from Final Fantasy, if it's Persona, like we like to geek out. Um, you've had me on a PlayStation Drive. Um, so I'm super excited to talk some games with you. But you know what, man? What? I've had so many conversations with you. So many. I've cussed <laughs> your, your, your views on certain games. I've agreed with you on other stuff. But one thing I've never found out is how did your gaming journey start? Like, we've never had that conversation. So let's talk it, take it back. Let's talk it to little Matt. When you didn't have no fluff under your nose, <laughs> you get me? When you wasn't looking at the waifus, when you was just a little guy. Tell me how you got into video games. You know what, man? It's, it's something that I, I like to think about sometimes. Because, like, I got into gaming pretty young. My uncle, like, back when he lived with us at the time, you know, my family being... Uh, new immigrants around that area around that era but like he had a sega genesis and he had like i don't even remember what it was anymore but i think he had some baseball game and i was like whoa i was like i don't know four or five but i kind of that kind of always stayed with me and i think my parents saw how much i would you know crash into his room being like can i play um that like for christmas uh a couple years later i got the playstation my parents got it for me and i remember get the first game i ever got was disney's hercules and i remember opening that box up and i was like yes playstation and that pretty much what kicked my playstation love off but i remember sitting there and playing hercules and i remember playing for like half an hour and my parents were like all right you, you gotta go to sleep now go to sleep go to sleep and i was like oh come on i just want to sit around and play hercules i went to bed i got up the next morning at like 6 a.m i brought like you know back in those days getting up at that time break of dawn not a problem i ran downstairs <laughs> My uncle and my dad were still sitting there playing Disney's Hercules. They stayed up all night on that PlayStation playing the entire time. I know why they sent me to bed early now. It's because they wanted to run on it. And it's just ever ever since then, you know, gaming's just been a mainstay in in my life. And it it all started with Disney's Hercules on the PlayStation. That is hilarious. So the Genesis, um, that's what you lot call it over there in the States and in Canada. In the UK, we called it the Mega Drive. Right. And it's funny because... Like the Mega Drive was big in Europe. Like say like Sonic was a bigger character than Mario was in in Europe. And then obviously in the States, Mario was the bigger one. So it's actually interesting that he had the Genesis instead. And um, the PlayStation 1, I remember first getting my PlayStation 1. And you already know the first game I got was Final Fantasy 7. Um, But I, the thing that I remember the most about the PlayStation 1 was uh, being in the hood and people used to chip it so you used to chip the playstation one and then you basically what they would do is they chip it and then you'd be have to get all of your games just on disc and i'd buy them for like five pounds yes, yeah they were sick and um 
it's so funny like you talking about how your dad and your uncle stayed up because my dad's an electrician and i remember um working with him one day and he was always a big big gamer and i remember us going to we were staying at someone's house i don't know why we were staying at someone's house i think we was doing some work in somewhere like manchester and something and we was mm-hmm. all up playing the xbox and you know me i'm not the biggest xbox guy but like when more playstation guys mm-hmm. and he was up playing halo and i remember going to bed about nine o'clock and then waking up at seven in the morning we're meant to be going to work this guy's still there playing Halo. <laughs> Not moved. Eyes red and glazed over. So, yeah, no, no. It, it, it's so funny that you say that. And I, I love how um, how families are connected with gaming. All right. Yeah. So that was your first console. So yep. we zoom forward and you have, become, like, you love yourself for RPG. Um, I was joking earlier about the whole waifus and stuff like that. And you're very much into kind of anime games like me. How mm-hmm. did that love come about? You know, it was also similarly back in the day. Um, Dragon Ball Z was like the first like anime that I'd ever watched. It was on at 8 p.m. on YTV here in Canada. And I remember watching it and it was like a religious thing for me. Like I, every every night, 8 p.m., I was in front of that TV glued to Dragon Ball Z. And like that was kind of my first real experience. Like I, you know, I'd watch the Pokemon, I watched Digimon, I watched the stuff that you kind of grew up on, uh, your Yu-Gi-Oh. So like the anime kind of you know kick was starting there, but DBZ was the one that like kind of really cemented my love. And then I remember going to a Rogers, which was kind of like our like one of our blockbuster, our video you know rental stores, and we came across this cover of this dude with like blonde hair, a metal arm, and I we're like, let's rent this. Little did I know, you know, we were renting Full Metal Alchemist and we, you know, it was the DVD of the first bunch of episodes. And I don't think my parents understood what they were getting us into because, again, they're like, oh, it's a cartoon. It's animated. No worries. There's probably nothing horrible about this. And Full Metal was like my first, like, I don't know, I'll I'll quote unquote grown up anime where I watched it. And I was like, oh, dang, this stuff can be serious. Um, And it kind of just went on from there. And like, you know, Tales of Symphonia was like the first real JRPG that I like. I sat down, played start to finish on my own. And like, I just remember falling in love with that game so immensely that like the JRPGs and RPGs just became kind of like my my home away from home from that point onwards. But it was like a combination of, of DBZ, Full Metal and Tales of Symphonia all kind of around the same time frame that I was like, oh, this stuff is dope. And then it That's... was just and it was on, off to the races from there. That's sick. It's so weird because I've never really been able to get into the Tales of games. I've tried, mm-hmm. and I know you're a big fan of them, but they've always kind of missed me. They just haven't connected. And I think maybe because I've always tried to go to them late, mm-hmm. and Tales of Arise was the first one that I played as a new gen one, and I loved that game. That game was like my game of the year. Like I, They did everything right for a JRPG. And Mm -hmm. when I say that, people who don't play RPGs won't get that. But RPGs, because we love them and they have such great story and combat, they are janky. Like (laughs) RPGs have some, JRPGs have some jankness to it. And when Mm -hmm. I'm talking about janky, I'm not even talking about frames and stuff like that. But they have a jankiness to it that we love and we're used to. A great example is we both love Persona 4 Golden. Like... Mm -hmm favorite persona game even though royals almost taking it over it's up there yeah but on a thing and one of the things that a lot of people kind of say and they're like oh you should play persona and everyone's like oh yeah but i don't have 100 hours and it takes 20 it takes um it takes 20 minutes for the game to get good for you to get in combat and that jankiness is the reason why we love rpgs because Mm -hmm. the lore that you get with those characters like they connect us with characters. Yeah, we might not get into a fight for 15 minutes. We well, see in that 15 minutes, we learn those characters so much, they become part of our heart. You get me? I'm totally with you. And it's kind of funny because I feel like that almost like builds into you this like certain bar that like, for for an example, here I've been playing Marvel's Midnight Suns constantly lately. And like the writing in the game is kind of hammy. It's kind of, you know, it, it's a little weird and it's a little strange sometimes. I personally love it because I feel like there's so much JRPG writing that we've gone through that's kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be the best one ever. I'm going to be number one. <laughs> that was just it doesn't bother me anymore. So when it comes to some like, you know, hammier writing, some kind of, you know, a little bit jankier writing, Midnight Sense has been completely like I, I'm in love with it. 
but like the writing isn't bothering me and i feel like that prob like possibly came from the jrpg the anime because some of that writing there is kind of like all right okay that happened let's keep going <laughs> all right matt we are both huge i brought out the scar for you playstation fanboys yeah oh come on yeah get it right glory glory Gl glory glory yeah, yeah okay. but we respect all consoles like we love xbox we love nintendo but we are big playstation fans you are host of a really incredible podcast called the playstation drive playstation have some of the greatest experiences that i've ever played on a console and we're going to talk about crisis core in a minute because it's really new and it's coming out but i just want two games from playstation library that's had a major effect on your life it could be for two completely different reasons but two games from the library that's had a major effect on your life it could be new old take the floor my friend okay so i'll i'll do i'll stick to the exclusives um the, the first of which being um you know it's a two-parter but i'll pick the superior of the two uh with the last of us part two <laughs> um that game had such a visceral reaction out of me for a lot of reasons. You know, it had an unfortunate lead up with the leaks and stuff going on. Um, and there was, there was a lot of hullabaloo going around that game going into it. And that game made me uncomfortable. It made me upset. It made me mad. There were points where I was ready to stop playing it. But because it was The Last of Us and because this was Naughty Dog, I was like, let me keep going with it. And I think the work that they do in that game to kind of bring you around on the story that they're trying to tell is masterclass. And I think just like the message and the story that that game carries. And it was also the first game that like, you know, while I was playing it, uh, my wife, she was, you know, my, my partner at the time as well, she'd walk by and she'd kind of like take a look and then she'd walk by again and take a look and then she'd sat down and start watching. And it got to the point where she's like, I need to go to the bathroom. Can you pause for five minutes? I'll be right back. I don't want to miss what happens next. And that was the first game that even she resonated with in such a way. So that game for me did a lot for me just because of time and place of when it came out because of the risk that Naughty Dog took with the story and where they, and, and just like how they built up the gameplay around it. And it's ultimately one that has such, has left such a lasting impression on me because of the messaging of the game, because of the story, because of how uncomfortable and angry it made me at points to then ultimately come around and be one of my favorite games of all time. The Last of Us Part 2, and like, I mean, Part 1 as well, but Part 2 is a masterclass in storytelling, in gameplay, and I, I love that game entirely. So, right, uh, Matt, let me stop you. Yeah. We've had cool on. Yeah. We've already agreed The Last of Us Part 1 is the superior version. No, nah, yeah. nah, you know what? <laughs> Listen. The Last of Us Part 2, Part 1 and Part 2 are like the yin and yang. Mm -hmm. Two games that are that have created emotions in me that I've never felt. And like we said, we love RPGs, we love stories, we love those emotions. But do you know what I think? Because it's a PlayStation first party, it doesn't mm -hmm. have that jank. So nope. like... For example, I love Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Love the game. But sometimes it's just too silly or sometimes it's just too awkward or sometimes like the mouth movement's different or like you'll see the cutscene Cloud who looks incredible 4K visuals mm -hmm. and then you'll see Cloud walking and he looks like a Muppet. I'm like, what the... Like, <laughs> and it take it... Like, it's always drawing you in and out, in and out, in and out. And like... um, with The Last of Us, you don't have any of that. You have all of the, inc like everything that should be right is right, as well as this emotional journey story that just rips your heart apart. And it's just like, it's incredible. And that game is the first game that I've ever not wanted to play the end. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I'm just like, 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 do I have to press something? Can I just stop? Can I just stop? Yep. Can I just stop? Matt, could you imagine if Naughty Dog made a serious anime game like Death Note? Dude, I'd be all over it because I think they completely have the writing capability to take... I, I genuinely think that they could do anything. Like, they have the pedigree and the talent to really kind of do whatever they want, which is why what I want out of them next 
is a new IP. I really want to yeah. see something brand new from them. I don't want more Uncharted from them. I don't want more Last of Us. Give us something brand new. Because again, if they went into like a serious anime style game, I think they could completely nail it. And I think they could really tell something really cool and really interesting. Given that a lot of anime, I feel like you have more bandwidth to get weirder with stuff. So if they kind of just, you know, went completely left everything at the door and just went nuts, I think they could make something really, really special. Yeah. Um, don't get me hyped, man. I know, don't get dude. Me I know. <laughs> don't get me hyped. I, I want some fantasy from them, but still with that darkness. Like, uh, like that's that's what I want. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let me get a sip of my water while you <laughs> tell me the next game uh, from the PlayStation um, library that means a lot to you. Yeah, dude. Marvel Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man is my absolute favorite superhero. He's one, he's one that I grew up on. He's a hero that, to me is like your quintessential what a hero should be. And to have Marvel Spider-Man for Insomniac to just come out swinging, pun intended, with I what I would say is the best superhero game, full stop. Like I would go so far as to say it, it is my favorite. I think it's the best. Um, the story, the build, the way that they play with your expectations, be like, is this going to happen? No, I don't think, maybe they're not doing that. And then after it culminates being like, they did that. To introduce Miles, to give Miles his own spinoff, to for everything that that game did, and just how fun it was. I feel like that game is the quintessential, like, what video games should be. It is fun. It, like, even movement, even just swinging around the city is a blast. For how fast that fast travel was, it's pretty much instantaneous, especially with the remastered on PS5. I never used it! I was swinging across the city every time just because of how much fun I was having just moving from point A to point B. And for them to take my favorite hero of all time and just absolutely nail it, can't wait. Like we had Yuri, uh, you know, the voice actor on the podcast earlier this year. And that for me was like one of my favorite moments ever to be able to speak to him and be like, thank you for the work that you did with your Spider-Man because he's, he is pretty much my favorite Spider-Man at this point. I think that character, they just, they nailed everything about that character and that universe. And I cannot wait for Spider-Man 2. I love that game so dearly. It's mad. One of the poignant points that you said there that really stand out to me is fun like when i talk about video games i'd never talk about how fun they are like i talk about the graphics and how mm -hmm. incredible the story is and the gameplay but i only really mention fun when i'm talking about like nintendo games yeah like mario odyssey is one of the most fun games i've had in years and spider-man was so fun like Insomniac got it so right. And what a lot of people don't realize is back in the day, superhero games used to be trash. Like, like it was hit and miss to get a good superhero game. Mm -hmm. And then the Arkham series came out and they got Batman so right. And everyone was like, wow, like that's the best superhero game. You can't get better. But I think Insomniac took it to the next level. I completely agree. I think it's the best superhero game ever. And then when we got miles for the launch of the ps5 and i remember playing it like i can't even i can't even count the amount of black superhero games i've played on one hand in my life and i remember swinging in and seeing the black lives matter uh, mural on the wall yep. and it just touched my heart man i was just like and i'm not even like you i know you you cry all the time i'm not even a cryer yeah. like that but it made me like it made me want to like i started getting like choked up and stuff so yeah, no, I proper agree with you. That that is easily one of the best um, PlayStation games uh, made, and and it's not an easy game to make, like to to do everything. And it's not perfect, no, nope. um, but it's not an easy game to make. All right, cool. So let's talk PlayStation third parties. One of the things that PlayStation do really incredible is team up themselves with dope third parties and one of the third parties they've teamed up with a lot is square enix and we've got mm -hmm. final fantasy 7 remake now, i'm not going to talk about any more but um squares actually remastered the old school psp we both had the psp love me my psp i think i play my psp way more than my vr and um on the psp it had a game called crisis core which was a prequel to final fantasy 7 and it followed the story of Zack Fair. And it basically dropped a huge bomb, which we found out in OG Final Fantasy anyway. But it basically explained the huge bomb that happened in the game. Now, we're not going to mention because it's a mad spoiler. 
So two questions. Mm -hmm. One, are you excited for Crisis Core? What are you going to play on it? Because I know you're like a Steam Deck Jesse nowadays. <laughs> and two, why do you think Square is so confident to drop such a huge bomb? So I've actually never played Crisis Core. Um, it, this, this is going to be my, this is gonna be my first time through it. Um, so I'm, I'm incredibly excited because this was one of those games where... Um, I just missed it. It passed me by when it when it hit, and I just never really had an opportunity to go back. So I'm incredibly excited when they when we got remake and then the announcement of rebirth. I was really hoping that we would see Crisis Core in some iteration come back, especially the way that remake ends. I won't spoil anything, but Crisis Core was always like that lost chapter for me. So to have it now properly remade with you know a, a bells and whistles added, the game looks fantastic. I can't wait to hop into it. I will be playing it on the Steam Deck again just because. From all the reviews and stuff that I'm seeing, it runs at 60 frames, no problem, on the Steam Deck for like three to four hours. I'm about it. I want that thing with me on the go. And even just to kind of emulate that PSP heritage of where it came from. So I'll be picking it up on Steam Deck. And, you know, I, I can't wait to see because all I've ever heard about is how important Crisis Core is. So even like the bomb that you're referring to, I don't know what that is. And I cannot wait to find out. I'm so stoked. Wait, wait, wait. So have you completed the OG Final Fantasy VII? I got like halfway and then fell off and just never went back and for no particular good reason, but I'm going to, like I want to play it properly start to finish before Rebirth. So I played it on um, the iPad. So I just played it on the iPad. True. Um, so, so yeah, you're going to get a huge spoiler that's going to blow your mind for Rebirth that you're not going to even expect. So I'm, I'm excited for you. I was so tempted to play it on my switch mm -hmm. just to relive that that moment but i was like you know i've completed it already let me experience it on the screen on the tv and now you're in for a ride my friend and 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 yeah you 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 you're in for a, you're in for a good time map yeah dude running ran out of time man i there's so many i didn't get to speak to you about persona we didn't get to speak more about the playstation drive um I gotta say, there's. I've worked in this industry for a good long time, and I've met loads of people. And I've, I'm cool with so much people, and I've got such dope relationships with so many people. But there's not many people I would consider a friend, and I actually consider you as a friend. I think you're super dope, super talented, and I want you to continue to do everything that you keep on doing because you're great at it. And I want you to all go and check Matt out, Matt. Before you leave, where should the people come? to find you well thank you man and like genuinely like you are one of the people in this industry that i'm very lucky to call a friend for somebody who's been in my corner for quite a long time uh you inspire me and i respect you gratefully so like thank you for having me back on the show it was awesome being here uh, as for where you can find me, you can find me on Twitter at burnout underscore Matt. You can find me over at youtube.com slash burnout brighter. And you can find me at youtube.com slash carpool gaming where we talk PlayStation Drive each and every week. Yes, they do. And you can go and check some old episodes to see my face. Now, yep. we are out of here. Enjoy your Christmas. Make sure you are safe. Make sure you're eating lots of food for me and send in all of that Christmas cheer. I've been Mr. Midas. He's been Matt. You are the MVPs. We out of here, man. Peace. Peace.